Today's session is all about back thickness. I split my back training up into two different training sessions throughout the week. Back width, which is focused mostly on vertical pulling movements like pull-ups and pull-downs for the lats. And then a back thickness day, which we're covering today, where the focus is primarily on building the density of the back through rows. This workout, there's also an extra emphasis on the upper and lower back. To start this session is the basic bread and butter bent over row. I warm up with one plate here just to get the blood flowing. And then it's onto a moderate set of around 15 reps with 185 pounds. Now, when I train the bent over row, these are performed in a very specific fashion where my back is in the fixed position at almost a 90 degree angle. As you can see, I lock my torso into the bent over position and without moving my back, I pull the bar into my lower stomach. After that warm up set, I'll throw on a vital tool for back training and that is lifting straps. All my heavy rows and the majority of my back training are all done with lifting straps, which I've come to understand over time that most people do not understand just how significant of a tool they are, specifically for developing the back. Many people wrongfully assume that they're used just because you cannot grip heavy enough weight without them. I'm not using them here to deadlift more weight. Lifting straps should be used to remove the mental connection between your hands and the bar. When you think about rowing the weight, if you're focusing on pulling the bar with your hands, the biceps and shoulders naturally take a ton of work away from the back because now you're no longer focused on contracting a set of target muscles, but you're just focused on holding onto the bar and pulling it from point A to point B. For developing the back, we don't want that. Now, when your hands are completely locked into the bar with the use of straps and no longer a weak link, you can mentally focus on the only thing that matters in pulling movements, and that is the elbows. You should be performing all pulling movements by pulling the elbows back not the hands. And when performing this movement, working with such a bent over position, this will severely limit the amount of weight that you can handle. This is because the lumbar is forced to hold the body in a static contraction throughout the entire set. This makes it virtually impossible to load extremely heavy weights but it has the benefit of strengthening the lower back like no other barbell row variation. As you pull those elbows into the body, I can track the middle and upper back fibers extremely hard. And after just two sets of 15 reps here, I'll experience a huge pump from the lower traps all the way down to the lumbar. When you think of a movement variation that hits a large amount of muscle mass across the entire body, this is one of them. I performed four sets of bent over rows this workout with the first two being traditional bent over rows with lighter weights. Then I load up some more weight than I do what I call the dead stop row. This movement's also been called the pendele row in strength training circles. But the major difference is powerlifters use this as an accessory movement for the deadlift. And many people tend to get caught up in just moving heavy weight on this exercise. And then it just becomes an explosive lift that's poor for muscle building. The way I perform my version of the dead stop row is almost identical to the bent over row. I set up in the exact same position, just as if I were to deadlift the weight off the floor. But the only thing I do is pull with the elbows. Again, forcing my lower back to statically contract under a heavy load. The only difference here from the bent over row is I deload the weight on the floor in between each rep. Doing this makes the lower back no longer the weak link in the chain and my upper back is able to pull much heavier weight off the floor. Don't be confused though. Anytime you're not allowing your back to break a 90 degree angle, you will still be extremely limited in the amount of weight you can handle. To put it in perspective, I rarely go over 225 pounds on this movement, but I've gone well over 315 pounds on a more upright row like the Yates row. The two sets I'll perform here are in the lower rep ranges of six to 10, and that'll round out four total sets of the barbell row before I move on to the next exercise, which is the old school T-bar row. This is an exercise that many bodybuilders hate on today saying it's a poor choice when it comes to range of motion. But I personally always had it in my training, and over the years, I've changed my technique on it to fit my specific needs. One major way I've improved on it for myself, personally, is to add in a landmine attachment that goes at the end of the bar. This allows me to step in front of the plates rather than the traditional way of being behind the plates. When you're pulling the traditional way with a D handle, with the plates out in front of you. Gravity naturally pulls you down, but the more plates you load up, the more the bar also pulls you forward at the same time. This generally causes a lot of stress on the lower back to support the unnatural position, and it takes away a lot of energy 
and focus away from rowing the weights. I found that by adding the landmine attachment and stepping in front of the load, my center of gravity is now above the weight and even slightly in front. So the weights are only pulling me down and not forward in the lift, no matter how much weight I add. This allows me to really lock in in place with my hips a bit more forward and slightly higher and a slightly higher torso, allowing me to squeeze this movement up, focusing on the thickness of the lats rather than just powering the weight up and down from point A to point B. This is a movement that you can really load up the weight on once you're not limited by the stress on the lower back. And the only downside to using this attachment is I'm now limited by how many plates I could lift on the bar before the plates actually bump into me when I'm rowing. I can get a longer attachment to fix this issue, but at the moment, I'm more focused on getting more out of the least amount of weight as possible. Because of that reason, I will go higher reps of 12 to 15 here, again done for four sets. Every single rep, I'm focused on driving those elbows back and pulling the lats together at the top and slowly opening them up into the fully stretched position at the bottom. It doesn't matter if it's one plate on the bar or five. I'm mentally focused on squeezing rather than the weight I'm lifting. This is one movement that I've gone as high as six to eight plates on in the past, but I was getting less out of the movement when I was more worried about the weight on the bar as I was using shorter reps and most of the supporting muscles were taking over on this lift. Back training for me has come down to dropping the weights forcing myself to stay in uncomfortable positions and then squeezing the muscle through a full range of motion. Eventually, working back up in weight with much more solid technique. After completing eight sets of rows for this workout so far, my upper and lower back are extremely fatigued. And to put the finishing touches on this session, we're gonna hit some pullovers. This workout, we're performing them with a cable, which allows for lighter loads and is less systemically demanding, which is great for the tail end of this workout. So far, my middle back and all the thickness muscles are fully stimulated, but we could always use just a little extra lat width. So to finish off, we'll use one movement to specifically target the lats. These are performed with a full stretch of the lats at the top and a full contraction of the lats at the bottom. Mentally, we're focusing on making the lats scream with every single rep. I personally use a V-bar handle on this movement as it allows me to not focus on my hands, which is very common with the rope attachment. I'll even use straps on this exercise, even when using a lighter weight of 50 to 60 pounds. Of course, I can grip that weight no problem, but I don't want to waste any mental or physical energy worrying about that. I want to focus all of my energy on what my elbows are doing. I'm starting this movement with my elbows as far forward as I can possibly handle for a deep stretch of the lats. And from there, I'm focusing on driving those elbows back as far as I can into the sides of the torso. In that contracted position, I'm squeezing the lats as hard as I can. This is the main lifting cue I tell myself with each rep on back training. Do not lift the weights into position, squeeze the weights into position. And if that's something that you have trouble connecting with, any pullover variation is the movement you wanna practice with. When you take the biceps out of the movement and are forced to use the lats to pull the weight into contraction, you will generally develop the connection with the lats on all pulling exercises. Over time, your goal is to get that same exact contraction even on pulling and rowing variations. Any compound movement for the upper back involves the back, the rear delts, and the biceps. But as bro science as it might sound, the more efficient you can get at training these lifts with bodybuilding specific lifting techniques, the more you can pull with only the back and no biceps at all, or realistically, a very small degree of biceps. These are the lifting techniques that I've personally used over the years to develop my physique. But if you wanna learn the exact exercises, sets, reps, and training routines that I've used to build muscle using proven old school bodybuilding training techniques, I highly recommend you check out my old school mass gain training programs in the description below. And as always, if you guys wanna see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.